Hello everyone and thank you for joining me today. In this video I want to talk about the books I read in the month of February. So I can't believe it's time to wrap another month up. It's just crazy. Today I'm filming this, it's actually the 8th of March. So happy International Women's Day to all the women watching this video. Uh, I remember we used to always celebrate this day in Romania and it was, I think we celebrated it much more than we do here in Denmark. I don't know. It's definitely a day to note and celebrate, I believe. In that honor, I also, I'm also reading books, mostly books by women, about women in the month of March with focus on the Muslim women and feminism within the Muslim community and the Muslim world. So I'm quite excited about my TBR. I'm gonna link it. I posted already a video about it. So if you haven't checked it out, I'm gonna link it <laughs> wherever I can. So go check that out as well. But we can't really move on to March before we wrapped February up. So here are the books I read in February. I read a total of five books, which was okay. I think in general I read like five or six books a month and I was a bit disappointed by the amount because I read so much more over the past previous months. So for me this felt like a really slow reading month but when I look at the five books I'm thinking okay I haven't done that badly. Also I participated in the Blackly challenge because it was Black History Month in February so my whole TBR was around reading books by black authors from different countries and so on and so forth. So the first book I finished in February was one I started such a long time ago. I started it in December but I didn't finish it in January because I was reading only classics in January so I had to put it aside for a month. So I was I was happy that I managed to finish it now because I have to take it back to the library tomorrow actually. But it is The Miseducation of Cameron Post by Emily M. Danforth and this is this is this is a long one. This is really long. It took me quite a while to get through it. It's quite wordy. 460-70 pages but I've been meaning to get to this because this one together with um, Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit by Janet Winterson are the two books I wanted to read and I heard a lot about which are which are discussing this, this particular subject. This one is about Cameron Post who lives in small town USA with her parents. But at the age of around 12, I believe, she loses her parents and she has to go live with her aunt and her grandmother. She's also gay and her grandmother and aunt are really traditional conservative and, and very Christian. So they are really, they believe that, that something must be wrong with you and you can be cured when you are gay. So it's really not the environment, the best environment for Cameron to be in. And she's always thinking about that if her parents would have lived, she it, her life would have been completely different. This is about her her journey and discovering herself, her sexuality, when it comes to her family, her friends, her neighbors, and her whole town basically, and what happens when when the secret is discovered, because basically she's hiding it, but you know, eventually, eventually they find out. So it is quite shocking the way this situations like this were, were dealt with, especially within the Christian community and especially within a small town environment because she has a friend from, her, from a bigger town and, and her friend's life is, is completely different. I really love the premise and the writing style is amazing, but I believe that this book is just too long for what it does and for how non-plotty it is because it's basically a character focused novel and it it could have packed a much bigger punch if it would have been less 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 basically it's like at least a, a good 100 pages less 300 pages maybe now it's like 460 i would believe it would have made a bigger impact because basically I feel that there are a lot of instances where there wasn't necessary to... some sections were just unnecessary, it didn't bring anything to the table. So I'm not gonna say much more apart from that, but if you're into coming of age stories and particularly with this type of subject, I think this is a great one. And I believe I'm gonna also check out 
oranges are not the only fruit, as I already mentioned. Because I think I tried to read that previously and then I just put it down. So maybe I should just give it another go. I also feel that that one has a completely different writing style. This one feels a lot like a young adult book. And I think that one felt much more like a book for adults. The next one I finished was uh, The Portrait of a Lady by Henry James. And this is my first book by Henry James. And I started this in January when, as I said, I was reading classic books and, and I just finished it in February. And I was actually listening to this and it was such a great experience. I love the premise of this. So basically we follow a young lady from the US who goes to visit relatives in the UK in Great Britain basically and there she gets an inheritance and then she goes to travel to just live her life and she doesn't really want to get married. She just want to explore and just be by herself, enjoy her life, figure herself out and so on and so forth. So that is the premise of this book and that is what it does. But I kind of did not agree with what happened in the second part. So I don't want to mention a lot of that because obviously I don't want to spoil it for you. But it just felt so odd that it went the way it went when it, especially thinking about the premise, what she said, I mean, what our main character said at the beginning. I don't know. I am still thinking about it and I really don't know. I really can't figure her out. And I think that's the main thing about this novel is our main character because she is, she's such a unique woman for her time because she's so independent. She's very bookish. And that's just really not how women were or how women thought that others want them to be at that time. I really love how Henry James writes. And also some of you mentioned in the comments that he is really great at writing characters. And I agree. From the start and the first third of this, I was I was amazed at how these characters were described. They were almost leaping out of the page. I will definitely give Henry James his books another go but a portrait of a lady we have a lady in this book um isabel archer but i can't figure her out i don't understand her choices <laughs> so i'm gonna leave it at that i did enjoy it and uh, i think maybe this is something i would like to revisit at some point the next book i finished was finally a book from my Blackly Challenge uh, TBR. But it was My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyinka and Brett Waithe. It is such a highly acclaimed and loved book on booktube. I think it was also on the Women's Prize longlist or shortlist at some point a few years ago. And it has such a quirky premise that I knew I wanted to read it immediately. So my sister, the serial killer, is basically about this nurse from Nigeria whose sister turns out to be a serial killer and she has to go and clean up her mess. And um, you might think that this is kind of a thriller, murder mystery, but this is much more like a literary, a literary novel, I would say. I wouldn't really characterize it so much as a mystery thriller. It, 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 there, it has something about it. The writing style is also quite short and feels a bit like fragmented, almost like. So it's one I actually finished in one day or something like that. It's, it's so easy to get through. So basically we follow these two girls and how they, they navigate the issues they have after these murders happen. And the nurse uh, is in love with this doctor because she works at a hospital, but then her sister sets her eye on this doctor. So what's going to happen? And I enjoyed it, but because of how fragmented it feels with these chapters, it doesn't feel like one chapter is flowing seamlessly into the neck. There's something there which interrupts it. And I think that's like a conscious choice, the way they, it was written. But I just felt that I couldn't really get into these characters and into the story that much. And also not much was explained as to why these things happen. We just had to take it as it as it came so we didn't the author didn't really get into the sister and and the whys of her sister even though yes there were some things which could explain it 
but not the whole thing. So I think this book is one where you're kind of left with questions on purpose or you're kind of left with figuring out the details or you're figuring out the empty parts on your own. The next book I read was Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin. So I picked this up as part of my ongoing project of reading books by South American authors because last year I discovered that I have read books by authors from all other continents, even if it's just one book. But basically I never look and I never hear about books from South American authors. Maybe there's a few classics I heard about, but other than that, it's really not represented on booktube or at least on the booktube I follow. And as part also of my project to diversify my reading when it comes to authors from countries, different countries which are not the US or the UK, I thought that this year, or I'm gonna start at least to focus on South American authors. So I'm just gonna focus on one country at a time and then just move on. And since Argentina is A in the beginning of the alphabet, that's where I started. What I noticed about South America that there's a lot of magical realism. So I wasn't sure that this is gonna be the right fit for me. Basically, this is kind of a, like a short book and I listened to it, so it's like a three hour audio book. So basically, sh this woman is dying in the hospital and she's communicating with this young boy who is not her son so they're not related at all. And they're kind of communicating and trying to figure out what happened and why is she in that hospital. And this boy is really trying to point out different things uh, which happened in the, in the past week or so, you know, kind of like day by day. So she kind of figures it out by herself and he's kind of there to help. But, but we don't really know exactly the situation of this boy. We kind of find out a little bit about it and we find out, we found, find out a little bit about her. So basically this woman and her daughter, they rented this villa and they went on a holiday um, somewhere in the province. And there they meet some neighbors and this neighbor has, uh, has a son which is there with her at, at this hospital. And what's, what's happening in that community, in that town where she rented the house? And what is the situation basically with her neighbor and her son? So there's a lot that comes into this and I really don't wanna get into the whys because it's very spoilery. And I would say that I was kind of spoiled because I read a very short review on Goodreads, which kind of spoiled it for me. So it is kind of like a haunting story about what's happening in that small town. And it's also about uh, that boy and what's happening with him. Cause there's a lot of like superstitious elements interwoven into this story. And it's all kind of like messy and it feels very, very confusing, but it's also a little bit of a horroristic and very, very odd, I would say, I think. I think that's the right word for it. So if you really love this unsettling, menacing atmosphere in a book where you don't really know what's happening, then I think this is, this is a good one for you. And especially if you're into horror novels, I think, I think you would enjoy this one. I'm not that much into horror and I was mostly confused, but I don't know how I would have experienced this book if I would have, wouldn't have been spoiled. So we'll never know. And the last book I finished in February is also one I finished and I read uh, for Black History Month and for my Black Lit Challenge. And that is uh, Between the World and Me by Tennessee Coates. So I've been meaning to read this ever since I heard about it. I think this author is so popular and and I can see why, because the writing is beautiful. So basically this is a nonfiction book in which the author writes about his experiences as a black man growing up in a very racist America. And he writes uh, these essays to his son to kind of prepare him for life in a black body, I would say. It really reminded me of James Baldwin's The Fire Next Time, and I guess it has the same premise, so of course it would. Um, they're both really great if you want to if you want to read about this topic. And it's a, such a short book, but it packs such a punch. 
as I said, it's beautifully written and it's it's so emotional and, and it's so important, I think everyone should read this and it's also so short, so so why not? Um, you can clearly see how much he loves his son, how worried he is because he's living, the son, and they're all living in this world in which a black body is just not not so valued because because of what's happening and because of police brutality. And he also talks about his loss, the way and how he dealt with losing a friend from the university who was killed by the police and how hard it was for him. He talks about this because not only because he it's also hard for him to 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 I guess to work through those those feelings and what happened and the injustice behind it but also because it's important for his son to know about this because unfortunately the way things are and because unfortunately how Peru's but how brutal the police is in the US and especially towards black people his son will probably also experience this loss at some point in his life and, and he wants to kind of prepare him. I also really love the part where he talks about how he didn't want to, he didn't want to kind of travel outside of the US because he always felt good where he was and he didn't feel the need to travel. But how different it was for him to travel and to be somewhere else without all the baggage that he and everyone who is black in the US has to has to live with on a day-to-day -day basis because of the color of their skin and how free he was when he traveled when they went for example to France with his family where he could just be it really felt like he was kind of liberated it was just so hard to read about it because it felt like you always have to be on the lookout or he always felt like he has to be on the lookout and he could never let his guard down while while being at home in his own country. It was so emotional at times, but so, so beautiful. If you haven't picked this up yet, I would highly, highly recommend it. These are all the books I read in February. I think I kind of failed at my challenge for my Blacklit challenge because the point was to, to get four points. I think for me, I mean, these two authors are, I mean, Oyinka and Brett Wade is Nigerian, British, I think. So I guess that's one, but it's fiction. So that's one point. And Tennessee Coates is from the US. So that's also one point. And this is nonfiction. So that's an extra point. So three points out of the four. Maybe it's not so bad after all. <laughs> I'm still going through um, A Long Walk to Freedom by Nelson Mandela, which is his autobiography. So I guess yeah, that would be my last book for this challenge because unfortunately I have DNF'd Sack Harbor by Colson Whitehead. So <laughs> these are my books and this is what I read for February. Tell me what are the books you have focused on in February? Have you also read for uh, Black History Month? And I guess, yeah, this is where I will leave you today and I will see you next time. Goodbye. Yeah.